Hey guys, it's Colin, and in today's video I'm going to show you my companion app for one of the most celebrated video games in the modern military genre, Battlefield 4. Battlefield 4 was released in 2013, but has a dedicated fan base that has kept it alive ever since. It's loved for its frenetic, massive multiplayer battles, and perhaps no other franchise has achieved such seamless integration between gameplay as foot soldiers and commanders of a wide array of war machines, such as tanks, jets, bombers, helicopters, and much more. I was inspired by the Battlefield series as a kid, and it's remained an enjoyable pastime for me ever since. Over time, one of the things you need to learn about performing well in Battlefield 4 is the timing that limited vehicle reinforcements become available. After their initial destruction, major vehicles are typically made available once more after a 90 second waiting period. Keeping track of these times is important because a good player knows that using certain vehicles at certain times and places is critical to winning. Unfortunately, there are no in-game displays of the time remaining to spawn. A player can try to keep track of the time in their head, but the chaos of the battle makes it very difficult. That's why I built my app. It's a Battlefield 4 vehicle deployment timer. Styled as a high-tech command center, the control panel on the right displays eight buttons representing vehicles a player can track. Copy. Warlord is scrambling additional attack helicopter. The 90-second countdown starts with a timer display and audible announcement. Our carrier strike group has deployed additional waterborne assault assets. Copy. Warlord The app is smooth and responsive. The timer can manually be adjusted up and down. Audible timer updates are given at 60, 30, and 10 seconds remaining. Be advised, friendly tank ready for deployment in one minute. Audio updates are very helpful when you can't look away from your primary screen. Friendly tank ready for deployment in 30 seconds. Friendly tank ready for deployment in 10 seconds. When the timer runs out, the control panel is refreshed. All countdowns can be canceled. Copy. Words. I created the command center voice messages by feeding computer-generated text-to-voice samples through multiple layers of distortion and filtering, radio static, and radio beeps. To the CP. Timer adjustment is useful for when you don't start the countdown on time. This is a drawback of typical stopwatches, which lack this feature. The video background combines assets available online and my own animations using public military footage. Next, I'll give you an overview of the code used to build this project. The project is written in Python and uses PyQt5 to build the GUI. The first step is to create a main window and define a counter variable. This variable will be used to keep track of the time. The initUI method defined below is run through the initialization method of the class. This creates all of the content of the GUI. Next, I define all of the font objects for the project and code in the video background. The video widget is the central widget of the screen and the video plays with a media player object. Finally, the video is added to a playlist so it can be repeatedly looped. Next, we load the background music, which is again played through a Q Media Player object and set to a loop just like the video. Next, I create labels to contain the dark panel background for the buttons, as well as the Reforcements Available banner on top. Another label is created to contain the text of the timer. I use my own custom imagery to style it. Here you can see the creation of the up and down buttons that manually adjust the timer, and here you can see the cancel button used to stop the timer and reset the panel. Next I add a number of sound effects to play when certain buttons are pressed. Next comes a large block of code. Each vehicle button uses four unique audio files. These are the audible timer updates at 90 seconds, 60 seconds, 30 seconds, and 10 seconds. Next comes the creation of the vehicle buttons. Each is given a uniform geometry and a PixMap object containing the image of the vehicle. 
A green icon is also added to indicate the button has been pressed. Next, a queue timer object is created. This gives us our timer functionality. If the timer has started, the method that it's connected to will execute every one second. A vehicle audio playlist is then created. It's a list of methods defined later that act as playlist instructions for each vehicle. The timer method will reference this list by index so it knows what audio to play. A list of all of the vehicle audio files is also created. Later, a reset method will use a for loop to cancel all audio playback. Next, a dictionary linking each button to its default icon is created. This will be used to reset all of the button colors to blue. Now we come to our methods. The up and down click methods increment the timer and update the text. Next come a set of four methods used to reset the page. One resets the timer, another resets the button colors, and finally, one resets the audio. A master method, if you will, called reset process is comprised of the previous three resets. The cancel method is then defined and makes use of the reset process to reset the page when the user clicks the cancel button. Next, the audio playlists for each vehicle are defined. The audio varies from vehicle to vehicle, so each vehicle needs its own method so the audio plays at the correct time. Perhaps the most important method is defined next, the timer start method. But to make more sense of it, I'll first jump down a little further below. This is because that method is used by all of these methods. These are the methods activated with each respective vehicle click. They first activate the changing orders method. It displays the message changing orders if another vehicle was already activated. Each button method gets its own unique index, and that index corresponds to the playlist used by the method. The screen then resets, and the green icon and a sound effect confirm the button press. Now each method has cleared the way to start the timer. Remember, this method runs every one second. So, every one second, the timer is incremented and the text to display it is updated. Now that text is styled depending on how much time is left. The first 79 seconds use blue, and the remaining 10 seconds use red as the countdown finalizes. Now a user doesn't see this, but the countdown actually goes all the way to negative 4. This is to allow time for the ready to deploy message to be displayed. When negative 4 is hit, the GUI resets again. That covers all of the content and behavior of the app, so it's ready to run. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and if you want to see more fun coding projects and helpful tutorials, please like this video and subscribe to my channel, Project Python. See you next time.